I'm joined now by Matthew Kahn. He's a Bloomberg Distinguished Professor of Economics and Business at Johns Hopkins University and Director of the 21st Century Cities Initiative there. Matthew joins us from LA. Welcome to the show. Hello. So as we're seeing these new studies highlighting this relationship between higher temperatures and increased violence, tell us more about that correlation and its significance. So we've known for a long time that when it's hotter, crime is higher. We've also known for a long time that crime is higher in high poverty neighborhoods. What our recent study set in Los Angeles is about is that crime is higher on hotter days in the poorest parts of the city. Uh, so this is new work of which communities disproportionately bear the costs of extreme heat, which has implications for climate change's future effects. So then what role do you think climate change is playing in really exacerbating some of this heat-related crime? So in the poor neighborhoods, these are older housing where people don't have air conditioning. And so extreme heat, the, the, these families face challenges of how they cope on these days. And in our study, we document that violent crime increases the most relative to other crimes on such extremely hot days. And what were the biggest surprises from your findings based out of Los Angeles? So, a uh, to some degree, perhaps it's not surprising that, that there's this crime heat gradient, but that it, it, it's substantially larger in the poor areas. I think one surprising result comes out is we document, we study police behavior on such hot days because uh, an active police force can play a proactive role in uh, addressing these issues. We find that there's fewer police vehicle stops, fewer, the police stop fewer vehicles on hot days. And these are exactly the days when we need the police to be giving 110 percent. And we certainly see that with school out for the summer, you have more younger people outside with more free time on their hands. And in fact, the U.S. Justice Department found that teens and adults and young adults make up a disproportionate share of violent crime arrests. So then what can be done in terms of accessible and affordable options to engage young people? Because not everyone can afford, you know, summer camps and summer vacations. So President Obama a few years ago endorsed a program in Chicago called Be a Man. And in, what this nonprofit organization has been doing is encouraging teenagers uh, to build up their self-control. On extremely hot days, it's hard to, to keep your temper and to, to stay in good spirits. And so what this Be a Man program is about is teaching teenagers ways to 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 stay under control uh, under difficult circumstances. And I think such grit and tenacity, building up these personality skills, can help us very much in our hotter world. And so how do higher crime rates impact business or the investment climate in a city or region? So in my own research, uh, consider Amazon's HQ2 decision. Amazon just had American cities incredibly excited and competing to, to be the next headquarters of it, to be the next perhaps Seattle. Those cities that fail to adapt to future heat and have a reputation for not being climate friendly, I predict will have problems attracting forward-looking businesses like Amazon and will be poorer if they engage in climate denial because they won't be ready for the shocks that we've unleashed because of our greenhouse gas emissions. And we're already seeing those shocks across Europe, which is experiencing record highs this summer. So without solving the ultimate problem of, of climate change itself, what can regional leaders and the city leaders really do to sort of help keep the violence down and, and keep up economic activity? So what I found fascinating in Paris today was opening up those water parks, which if I were a young man, that sounds fun, but it's also very smart. Los Angeles has its cooling centers. Los Angeles is working with Uber and other ride sharing programs to get people to poor people to more easily access these places. So I think it's crucial for mayors and urban leaders to work with the climate scientists to know when the heat waves may break out, to help poor and vulnerable people to access cooling services. To, such that the impacts on quality of life can be minimized. Now, as we look globally, we're seeing that the journal studies in conflicts and terrorism also found a significant relationship between high temperatures and terror attacks, as well as the higher rate of fatalities from these attacks. How should governments or the private sector really be taking these findings on board? 
So this is a very important question. About a decade ago, an important paper came out set in sub-Saharan Africa that national civil war risk is higher in those nations when they have extremely hot summers. So violence both at the individual level and at the army level and at perhaps the terrorist level, it appears that all of these rise during hot times. Now that we're aware of this academic work, this creates an opportunity for the police and in the U.S. with Homeland Security to to take extra actions to be prepared because we do face this risk, uh, uh, that terrorist attack risk is high, higher on hotter days. All right. Thank you so much. Fascinating stuff. Matthew Kahn there, Bloomberg Distinguished Professor of Economics and Business at Johns Hopkins University and Director of the University's 21st Century Cities Initiative.